If you're finding that your fleets are consistently being jammed, then this might help. Hello and welcome, I'm JD, and today we're going to talk about offset scouting in this tutorial. And so the technique of an offset scout isn't new if it's spoken about quite a lot in terms of being a way to break through the enemy jamming by positioning one of your scouts so that you're able to maintain line of sight onto the enemy ships. So why might you need this? Well, here on the screen you can see that my main fleet here is being jammed and that's because they're all together in one group and when the enemy has been able to provide blanket jamming uh, onto the leap of henrietta which is probably the largest ship that they'll be able to spot at the maximum range based on any radar that they have all my ships are being jammed because all of them are trying to use their own radar to search through uh, the jamming to find the enemy and they're simply not being able to do that so this may also occur if you've got multiple fleets both yours as well as teammates in the same area, all being captured within the same jamming cone from one or multiple blanket jammers. So multiple blanket jammers will have a diminishing effect. However, I think up to about the first three or four, it, it's worthwhile stacking them. And after that, it severely drops off. However, that can also lead to additional jammers being brought to the team to jam the areas to the left and the right hand side of the main target area, which is the battleship. So here we have the two ships that were jamming us. We have one with a blanket jammer, and then we have one with a, another uh, Mark 61, just simply so the game doesn't uh, finish this automatically. And so if I select the Leap of Henrietta, I can show you um, so we can see the visuals, uh, what was happening to us before. So if I select Electronic Warfare and I target one of the Corvettes, you can see that they are both now caught within the blanket jammers cone and the cone is both quite wide and quite long being up to 10 kilometers and you can see that they're they're firmly in the middle so that was what was happening to us at the distance of about four and a half five kilometers all our ships were within that jamming cone and if we had additional teammates close by they would have also been captured which means the radars wouldn't have been able to identify that those small ships are there Note that the closer the larger ships are, the more likely that they will be spotted through the jamming just based on that signature size, uh, whereas the smaller ships, uh, you are less likely to see those. So if you see something with a heavy cruiser, for example, you may then see a couple of uh, frigates when the blanket jamming is turned off because the heavy cruiser is being able to be identified um, through the blanket jamming based on a signature size, whereas the smaller ships are likely not going to be able to uh, be seen. And sometimes it's the smaller ships that are actually the ones that are not only doing the uh, jamming or the radar jamming or the communications jamming to you, but they're also the ones that you want to target. Even though the high threat is the battleship, the smaller ships may be the ones that you want to uh, identify and find so that you can neutralize those blanket jammers and not have them successfully jamming you later throughout the game. So what is the offset scout or the offset scout technique? So basically the definition of offset is to place out of line. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our ships. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter what um, radar that they are equipped with. You can have a front line equipped on them. However, at the end of the day, um, that may place that, position, that scout in a little bit more danger. Whereas if you have something such as a parallax or a spyglass, it just gives you a little bit more breathing room in terms of positioning. So we're going to take this scout uh, on the far right. We're going to place it out of line of the main fleet and out of the line of that blanket jamming. So I'll do that now. So with the scout now placed out of line and we come back to our main ships, you can see that yes, whilst the jamming still occurs, we come across and now activate the radar on the scout that we placed out of line or offset to the main fleet, you can see that the tracks occur. And if we now come back to the Leap of Henrietta, remembering before that these tracks weren't present, we can actually see through all the jamming noise, those two tracks are still there. And that's because through the communications network, the tracks are being identified by the scout off to the right hand side being broadcast through a communications network that is both on and has a functioning antenna on both ships so both the transmitting ship being the anti-scout and the leap of henrietta having the communications network enabled and then also having a functioning antenna on both so now we can see both the tracks through the jamming so now we can do a few things well, first, we can always counter jam those ships so they also then suffer the same uh, interference and noise as, as we are encountering so that hopefully our smaller ships are covered. We can also provide fire solutions. So either through um, direct fire weapons such as HE, uh, RPF, uh, if, if you know that it's a Corvette or a frigate and you may want to um, just knock them out a little bit and you're just hoping to get any damage on there. 
um, or you may want to also apply things such as uh, home on jamming missiles so that you can fire down uh, the middle of the jamming with a little bit more accuracy, uh, hoping to get those strikes onto the targets. Additionally, you can also now provide locks. So from the leap of Henrietta, I can lock this first target here. And the offset scout can now also provide locks for that main fleet. So now we have a two target locks within all that jamming cone, even though that radar jamming is affecting the main fleets uh, in the center of the screen. Now this will just help us provide those fire onto those ships. So again, marking those high value targets with those locks so that we can put effective fire onto them, knocking out the electronic warfare that is providing support to the larger capital ships or beam ships um, so that later on we're a, we don't have to continually suffer that cycle of jamming and having to continually fight through that jamming. Obviously, you do have burn throughs and stuff like that that you can do with the main fleet, but the purpose of this is actually having that offset scout that is able to provide the identification of the two ships that we do want to see uh, based on positioning as opposed to burn through and having the damage potentially to our own radar. So ultimately, in a simplistic form and in a nutshell, that is offset scouting. Now, like all good things, there is a lot of complexity within the game because this is being conducted in a nice sterile environment where there is no terrain and there is no um, other fleets positioning, maneuvering. There aren't other scouts on the enemy team. A few things that I think should be considered when using the offset scout. Uh, first is probably the hull type that you want to use. You want to keep that scout um, undetected as, as like you normally do but you also want to have the ability uh, to position it and react to where the enemy is because in this current scenario, there's no terrain. So uh, normally you would have to have not only line of sight between this ship uh, and the enemy ship, but there's likely some piece of terrain in the middle. So where you position the offset scout uh, is important. Now I'm operating on the same plane, so it's nice and simple here, but at the end of the day, you can always use the full three-dimensional space to go up and down, uh, left and right, uh, and you know a myriad of other combinations so that you're using terrain as cover in order to get that line of sight onto the enemy target that you think or the rough area location of where that enemy is uh, that is doing the jamming. So you obviously know where jamming comes from because if you scroll out enough you can see that uh, somewhere in all this noise and you can see the tracks in the center for a bit of a reference point uh, that's where the jamming is going to be. So when you know where that is, you then have the ability to position this offset scout somewhere that's not in this jamming cone, which is probably coming down somewhere, uh, maybe sort of touching to the left and right um, like that. I think this allows you in terms of the normal uh, positioning for scouts a little bit more uh, flexibility because you know where that jamming cone is actually being positioned then uh, you don't have to guess necessarily where the enemy fleet is. You know that there's that rough direction uh, somewhere down that line. So if you have a scout with sufficient range, you should eventually be able to identify uh, where that jamming is coming from. There are a few things that also then add additional layers of risk um, onto an offset scout as opposed to a normal scout um, is that you're probably going to need a, to get a little bit closer because a lot of EWAR at the moment is being placed on smaller ships as opposed to larger capital ships. So as the offset scout, you do have to have your radar on and then you need to also have communications on in order to then broadcast that to the receiving ships that are the uh, ones who will benefit from the offset scouts positioning. So as the person who is doing the jamming, so if you were playing as the enemy in, the, in this particular scenario, then there are certain things that you can take to um, mitigate or target an offset scout. So for example, they need to have their radar on. So if you're bringing any electronic support modules like the Pinard, then you're going to be able to um, roughly sort of position and identify where an offset scout may be uh, maybe take a few uh, pot shots with some missiles or you know use your own scouts or other ships in order to position it and take that ship out because um, you'll be able to detect its radar on likewise because this is all communications based if the enemy ships are communication jamming the main ships as well as radar jamming well then those offset scouts aren't going to be able to provide those tracks to the main ships however communications jamming through the hang-up jammer from the alliance it currently does have a very narrow field of vision. So um, as long as you are able to disperse uh, your ships and maybe your friendly ships around a little bit, you may not all sit within that cone. So whilst one may be um, communications jammed, there's a higher likelihood of being able to move, position your fleets uh, still in the same area, but not have them all affected at the same time. It's sort of rare at the moment, as I say this in uh, December 2022, for people to bring multiple communications or hang-up jammers, but that may change in the future. 
right so that ends uh this tutorial it's one of those things that it is simple in concept but it is going to be difficult to execute there are a lot of other layers of uh, like i was mentioning before positioning the enemy always gets a say uh, multiple blanket jammers that can focus not only on the main fleet um, due to their diminishing returns but also uh, flank to the left and right um, however you do have the option to, um, to obviously play as a team if you are in those sort of 3v3s or 4v4s um, multiple offset scouts from different fleets that are able to do it noting not, not every fleet build will be able to do this uh, if you are taking some things they definitely do particularly around battleship builds or missile cruiser builds they definitely rely on having you know those smaller ships but higher value if you do have any uh, tips for other players on how you uh, either build an offset scout or you've used it to good success in the past please definitely drop that in the comments below so that other people can learn from your experiences because because the more people that share those experiences uh, the better the, the community will just get in general all right that's it from me thank you very much for listening and have a good day